Hey everybody and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, noob to expert tutorial with me and the other guy. Scott! <laughs> me! Hello! You. You're still there, you're doing great! We're still in January 36th, we haven't even had one day of the game, not even a minute of the game actually playing. And we're gonna get into that in a second. Um, I'm actually mean that this time. It's episode 4, I believe, so we should. Uh, I want to go through all the other stuff you can see on your main screen overlay before we go into that, because there's quite some some buttons and, and numbers and stuff left. So first of all, on the very top where you have your convoys, which we've already gone over a little bit, below that you have your alert bar, which we've already mentioned before. There should still be no divisions in basic training and insufficient resources popping up. Yes. If you hover over insufficient resources, it actually will tell you how much you need and what the downside is of not having these resources. That button will probably go away as soon as we hit play because the, the convoy should start importing the stuff that we've set to import uh, a minute ago. And no divisions in basic training, that's that's true. We don't have any divisions in basic training. I think we should probably start that in a second. So let's go about the rest of the buttons. Let's start in the top left. We had the flag already, right? If you click on that, you get your uh, political overview screen with your focus tree item, which is really important. Um, then you have the row of buttons with research and trade and all the other stuff. There's more in there. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna cover the rest later because we don't need them right now. But above that, the first thing you will have there is these three hands clasping each other's arms, which is the national unity with a percentage next to it, right? Yes. What's your national unity? Uh, base is 60. Uh, okay. And it currently also says 60 in the box? Um, 65, because right, so, yeah. I have Victor Emmanuel III, and he gives me a plus 5%. That's cool. I like that. Yes. Yeah, it says it here, right? Mm -hmm. Victor Emmanuel III. Uh, national unity plus 5% is what he does. That's a national spirit. If you... Uh, if you have your political screen open, so if you click on your flag... Okay. You have under focus tree. You have your national spirit box. Uh, do, 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 do. It's on the very top, next to your leader oh, yes, portrait. Yes, yes, yes. And below that, the first okay. icon you have there is that Victor Emmanuel the third. Yes. And next to that, you have the the eagle Vittoria Mutilata, which gives you yes. some other stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. communist diplomacy minus ten. And all the other stuff, Justify War Goal Time, and so on. Doesn't matter right now, but that's that's stuff you start out with. That's your national spirit. You will see more popping up there when you go through focus tree items that actually give you national spirits. There are some okay. of those. Yes. Good. National unity, was it, what is it for? If you hover over what it says, national unity represents the willingness of the people at the top to prosecute a war to the finish. The higher the value, the longer they will fight on before considering surrender. So for me, it's 90%, which means... Any potential enemy will have to invade 90% of my country uh, to make me surrender. Now, your country mostly consists of victory points, and we're going to cover those later when we actually have a real war going on. For you, currently, you have to deal with three victory points in Ethiopia. If you zoom in there, you see that Addis Ababa, which is the capital, if you hover over that, it says Addis Ababa is worth five victory points. Yes. The province right next to that is Harar, which is worth one, and on the very top is another one. That's another victory point. So in total, they have five, six, seven victory points. And each of the provinces also gives you a little percentage. So whenever you invade one of those, well, sections there, you know, you have these lines going through all the country there. Each of these is a province. Like I said, if, if you click on Ethiopia, just somewhere, you will have an outline of all of Ethiopia, that is one state, and you have another outline of what you just clicked on, that's the province. Right. And all of these provinces have a little value. I don't know exactly what it is, but they do have one, like point one or something. And then you have these special provinces where there are actually victory points. So to win a war, you need to have, yeah, 90% or whatever their national unity is, of their victory points. And the easiest to get that is to get the big cities and all of the other points that you can see on the map. Sometimes taking all of those cities is just not enough. You just need to take raw land to actually make them capitulate. That's when you go over to Canada, for example. 
they have like four or five victory points, but you need to still take 50% of their territory to make them capitulate. That's how that works. That's, in a nutshell, how to win a war. That's what your national unity is for. So in general, if you expect people invading you, you want to have a high national unity. Good. Next to that is um, that, that little Greek building, I always call that. <laughs> or Rome, Roman building, maybe. That's your political yes. power. For me, it says two right now. Mine says one. Good. If you hover over that, it says political change plus two per day. So every day that runs by in the game, I get two more. The base value is two. Uh, because I have Adolf as a leader, I get 25%. Recruit difficulty gives me another 25%. And army innovations deducts one. What's this army innovations? You have something else there. Uh, when you click on your flag again and you look at your focus tree button, that's the same text on there. Because you are researching a focus, you spend one political power per day to do so. Ah. Now, what's political power for? Well, we get to that later. Other than spending it for, you know, your focus tree. <laughs> Next to that, you have your manpower. It says for me 1.3 million. Uh, let's see, I got free manpower, which well, is... Well, just the total number it says in the box. Uh, 708. Good. That's not bad. It's good to know. Yeah, there are some stats. If you hover over that, it tells you uh, total manpower, free manpower, used manpower, then what's the, all the factors that go into that. And at the very bottom, it actually says monthly growth in states. And the important factor is recruitable population. I get about 2,000 people per month on top of what I have up there. So if I spend my 1.3 million in two weeks in a war, and I only get 2,000 per month, it will take me a while until I actually can train a new army. So you don't, want to, you don't want to lose too many of those. You can increase what you have available, but we get to that later as well. Currently we're just looking at what's there. Uh, next to that you have your factories. I have 76 factories in total. Hmm. How many do you have? Total? Hmm? Uh, military 19, naval 11, and civilian 15. Mm -hmm. And the total of that is the number it says right there, right? Yep, 45. Exactly. So that gives you an overview of what you have in terms of production capacity. Now, usually that number doesn't really give you much, but when you hover over it, it actually tells you how many military factories, how many of those are in use, and so on. So that is a quick indicator of where you can still expand your war effort. So if you have like 0 out of 10 naval dockyards in use, then you can probably start building ships. One thing to remember though, uh, when you actually produce ships, they need to be crewed. So whenever a ship is done, it will need manpower. Uh, opposed to that, <laughs> whenever, let's say, a tank is done, it's just a tank. It's in storage. Until you actually train a division that uses that tank, then you will have to assign the manpower. So that's a little difference there. You can have 10 million infantry equipment in storage, if the game lets you. Um, but as long as nobody picks up the gun, you don't need to spend any manpower on that. Right? Yep. Ships are different in that regard. So are fighters. But for fighters, again, that only comes into play once you actually deploy the fighters, because they don't need a crew before you put the fighters in an airport. But we come to fighters way later. Okay, right to that, above the alerts, you have three stars. A green, a blue, and a red one, right? Yes. You remember from research that we had a green, a blue, and a red section in the research? Yes. So green is army, blue is navy, and red is air experience. Now these are the experience yeah, values you currently have going. You can have a maximum of 500 unless you run mods. Um, that's why it's capped, so you can't get any more than 500. Now what is this? Army experience, the green one for example, whenever your armies go to war and actually fight, they gain army experience. You might have a focus tree item that gives you free army experience. I'm currently working on army innovations. If I hover over that and tells me, I will get 10 army experience for free. Um, whenever you train your divisions, which you are currently doing, and I will start doing that in a second, they will also slowly accumulate army experience. Now what do you use that for? Later. Way later. <laughs> so we already spoke about the convoys. If you hover over the number next to the convoys, it tells you this is the amount we have, this is the amount we use. Uh, we have some reserved for naval invasions, for transferring troops, for trade and supply. We get back to that later as well. Um, 
it's just good to have a high number here. I usually just always have a full production line, 15 docks producing convoys, if I actually run a country that has ports. So if I go Austria, Czechoslovakia, I won't have any convoys. <laughs> it's just the way it is. No ports, no convoys. Okay, to the very, very right on your screen, top right, um, you have a minus and a plus, and in between it says 12, uh, well, 12 o'clock, 1st of January 1936, right? Mm -hmm. That's your game timer. Below that, you have a, well, five slots, and the, the leftmost slot is green, right? Yes. That's your speed up control. So we're currently running just standard game speed, and if we press play, this will tick up slowly. So we'll have 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., and we get really bored because nothing is happening. We're going to speed this up a little bit. I'm going to set this to 4 and see if our internet connection can handle that. And if not, we will have to reduce this slowly. There are some cracks around that actually play a whole single player game on speed 5. Because there's nobody else involved they need to sync the game with. And you can do that. Um, it will all happen very, very fast. If you have troops that are getting annihilated, you have little to no time to react to that. And you need to be really good to see that coming. Otherwise, your army's gone. But I know those guys, and I, I do that myself sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can see this, uh, the time is flashing because we're still paused. We're going to run the game in a second. Next to, or well, below that, you have, well, four buttons, really. One is the little note. That's your music controller. If you click on that, you can actually select a track you want to run. Let's say, uh, Song for the Children of World War II, play. And there's just a next and a pause. So if you have a mod running, and that mod has you know, copyrighted content and you're recording and you want to put that on YouTube, you usually just set this to pause because you don't want the music to play. Otherwise, you know, you can't monetize your content and that's bad for you. And you can't earn money. Next to that are three buttons that are really important. Usually these are not colored. Again, these, this is just my coloring uh, mod and you can already see these are the same colors as in the army experience and navy experience and air experience and the same as in the research. It's just your army, your navy, and your air, it just says. Well, it's your planes, right? Yep. Good. If you click on army, you get a fold-out menu that gives you all the troops you have. All of them. Wow. Yeah. It says 30 divisions, and then there's a lot of stats that you can go through at your leisure. Not just now. It doesn't matter. Uh, below that, it gives you a rundown. It says, I have 24 infantry, 3 tanks, 1 motorized, 1 horses, 1 mountaineer, whatever you have. You just see that you have different um, division templates deployed. That's how the terminology goes. And right. below that, you see all your units, and on the right-hand side, you see the icon and the color of which army they are assigned to. Yes. If they are not assigned to an army, there will be no icon and no color. So that is also where you can find unassigned divisions. Mm -hmm. I will always go where the alert button that pops up because that actually goes right in your face. Also, I need to change colors here. And icons. There, that's better. Tanks should be tank icons. Good. Uh, let's click on Navy. Which is the anchor Navy. below the time. You should have a little more than I do. <laughs> Probably. Uh, um, yeah, just a little. Okay, what I usually do is I hold shift and then I click on each one of those. Mm-hmm. And then, okay. when you have them all, let go of shift. Now, a couple of things happen. First of all, you change your map mode to naval view. You see that the map changed, right? <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. On the bottom right, you can actually see that there's an anchor which is clicked. Yes. Strategic Navy map mode, that's the one. That's what we are in now. Whenever you select a navy, you automatically go to navy view. Whenever you select an army, you go to army view. And you have different icons on the map actually highlighted. You have your ports and there's straits and all of that. We go through that once we get there. On the left-hand side, you have all your navies selected right now. And you can see those different navies. There's a commander, icon, silhouette thing. Right. Then you have the composition of those navies, different ships, and then you have a lot of buttons. I'm going to go through navy, the whole topic of navy. You can see this will be a little bit. Uh, at a later stage. For now, what we want to do is we want to merge all of those navies into one big navy. So on, on the top, on the left hand side, on the top, below the the tank icon, the purple tank icon. Um, on the left side... Mm -hmm. okay. On the top. 
You see, you, you can only merge navies when you have more than one selected. Yeah, did you only have one? I have. How many do I have? Because for me, it just says merge selected fleets. Well, do it again. Click on, on the navy button below the timer. Um, okay. Then you should have your list of navies, right? Yes. Hold shift. Click on each one of them. Takes a while. <laughs> yeah, this is going to take a while. <laughs> yeah, well, just, you know, go through with it. Smoke them if you got them. <laughs> mm hmm Okay. Then let go of shift, and then you should have the whole thing selected. Yes. Now okay. you should have more than just one commander on the left-hand side, right? I have first and fourth. <laughs> All right. Looks right. good. So now you can click that button that says Merge Selected Fleets, or shortcut is G for group. Okay. That's it. Your That's navies it. will now go to one port, to the port of the main navy, which is usually the biggest one in the list, and just merge into one big navy. That's all we want to do for now. Okay. And then you just go escape. And you should be back in your regular map mode. Yep. If not, F1, F2, and F3 are the map modes. Or the buttons in the bottom right, the green, blue, and the red one. The Bhutans. Mm-hmm. All right, but we're still on the top right. <laughs> so next to the three, well, um, military types, uh, you have that little trophy, which is achievements, which we don't have because we're not in Iron Man mode. And then you have the globe with the 0% below it, right? Yes. Good. That 0% is your world tension. What is that? I'm going to tell you later. But you can click on the globe. You can click on the globe. Okay. So you get world tension history, right? Yes. And on the very right is a button, Current Wars. Current Wars. Yep. And that should feature you. Yes. There Italian War in Ethiopia. Now you can click on this Italian War on Ethiopia line anyway. Before we do that, what do you see here? Well, first of all, you see it's Italy versus it Ethiopia. Obviously, because those two flags are in there. And it actually says it. And below that is a little uh, losing, winning indicator. So whenever that bar moves, whenever the red grows bigger or the blue goes bigger, you're either losing that war or you're winning that war. So you can click on that on that whole entry and you get the pop-up Italian war in Ethiopia. Yep. For you, since you're in that war, you will have an icon in your alert section where you have no divisions in basic training and insufficient resources. There should be an explosion icon. Yes. If you click on that, you get straight here. Okay. For every war you have, you will have one of these. Um, that's just to show you that that's there, because we're going to go through this at a later stage, but you can see here who's fighting who. There's a little bar next to each one that tells you uh, progress towards capitulation. Um, you will see participation in the war, which is indicated by a percent. That's a yeah, war participation score. Uh, how many divisions you are fielding, what your industry looks like, how many casualties you've taken, and you get a summary on top also, fielded manpower and losses and stuff like that. And at the bottom you see allies not in war. So if the two of us were actually allied, you would see me at the bottom as not being in the war. And you could call me in if you wanted. That's that. Okay, let's close those two pop-ups. We don't need them right now. It's one of the things you need most often to see what's going on in the world. Just to see who's at war with who right now. So then top right again, you have your main menu, you have your help, and you have your dismissed alerts. There's currently nothing to click, it's just to know that they're there. Uh, then you have your theater. I'm going to get back to theaters later, that's a whole thing. And then we have the bottom right already. Well, bottom middle is your armies, right? Yes. Good. And bottom left is chat and lobby, which we don't need. So, bottom right. Uh, there's a little search icon, right? A magnifying glass. Yes. You can click on that, or shortcut is F. When you hover over it, it always tells you the shortcut. It's always good to know. And then you can search for something like London. And then you can click on London, and then it zooms in on London and tells you there. Ah. Yeah. So if you ever want to find your opponent, that's how you do it. 
<laughs> Who am I fighting? Uh -huh. <laughs> Below that, you have your main map modes. Uh, the three we've already um, well, spoken about a little bit. So you have your default map mode, which is your army. Uh, you have your strategic navy mode. And you have your strategic air mode. And whenever you click one of those, or you just press you know, F1, F2, or 3 you see the map changes. You have air regions, you have naval regions that pop up and all, all kinds of things. We're gonna go back to that when we go into the different types of, of wars that we're gonna fight here. For now it's just good to know that they're there. On the right hand side of that, it's really hard to click on those because they're pretty small and when I go too far right it's, it starts scrolling my screen. So it's good to remember all those shortcuts behind them. It's usually your F1 through to F9. So on the top is supply areas, and we're going to have to talk about supply once we actually start doing a war. If you click on that, you get a very, very weird looking map mode. Yeah, yeah with this, um, you know, gas cans and uh, railroads and pluses and numbers. Yeah. This basically shows you how much supply you have in any given region. All the supply, and by supply I mean your army supply, so the guns they have, the, the food they get. Well, food is not really in the game. But guns, supply equipment, uh, tanks, horses, whatever. Whatever you're producing. All that stuff always comes from your capital. If you actually hover over one of the well, green areas, the green areas are yours. Uh, you will see an arrow going from Rome, or for me it's Berlin, to that area. Right? So let's let's say you hover over well Sardinia or something, the the bottom of your well the, the Italian boot while you're in supply map mode. Yeah. It should show a red arrow coming from Rome going into that area. I got uh little lines and everything that go in different directions. Like hmm. the shipping lines, I got. Um, if I go over Rome, all I'm getting is the information popping up telling me. All right. Well, I see it here. <laughs> you can see it on the video. Um, yeah. <laughs> now we're going to get back into that, so don't worry about that. It's not that important right now. We have to speak about supply anyway, but we're going to do this in stages. Currently, it's just the buttons. Okay. Uh, below that, which is F5, you have a states map mode. Now that just shows you all the different states you have in your country. And all the other countries. I don't know why that is there. No, nobody needs that. Uh, next one is resistance map mode. That does nothing really at the moment because there is no resistance and resistance is a topic we have to touch a little later. Then we have resource map mode. That shows you where your resources are coming from. Yay. So you can see for example in Poland uh, there's four oil and eight steel, another twelve steel. If you invade those areas, if you control that state where this icon is in, then you get those resources. Roughly. Uh, next map mode is diplomacy. When you click on that, you basically see yourself in green and everything else is, well, terrain colored, right? Um, yeah, except for Ethiopia. Which is red. red. Yeah, you're at war with Ethiopia. So yeah, the, the other countries will change color depending on how much they like you. So they will turn yellow when they're not really fond of you, and they will turn red when they're at war with you. And everybody you're fighting with is basically green, which is also nice to have. We're going to go back to this map mode a little bit, because whenever you make advances into enemy territory, it will be light green. Whenever the enemy comes in your territory, it will be light red. So you see how much you lost and gained, which is really nice. And then there's a factions map mode, which is the last button down there. And this is the main theme of this tutorial. You see all the different factions, there's only one that interests us, which is the Axis, me. Yep. Uh, soon to be you. And then there's the Allies and Common Turn. And everything that's not a black color will have to vanish from the map, and then we're done with the tutorial. <laughs> that's how we're doing this. Right, okay. below that, below that factions button, there's six more, and some of those will interest you. So let's start with the left one. Toggle displaying unit counters between all or players. I don't have that on, so it's, it's yeah, grayed out. If you click that, it's yellow or something. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's yellow, but nothing's happening. Okay, because you're still in faction map mode. If you go back F1 into unit map mode. Okay. And you click that, then you will see stuff happening. 
Usually, once we're in a faction, you will see stuff really happening here, but it, it changes the, how the different units are colored. So currently, mine are green, and then Poland is gray, and France is gray. When I'm actually in a war with them, they will have different colors. Next to that is toggle unit color between countries or legions. So this, this first one is all or players. So if you click that, you will only see the players, you and me, and none of the others. The second one is unit color between countries or legions. If you click that, <laughs> yours will be like gray and the others will be brown or gray or yellow or something. So currently, you and I show gray unit colors, sort of, because we don't have a problem with each other. We're the same, um, well, in, the, in polit politics, we're, we're both fascists. We're the same ideology. Right. France is blue. Um... Poland is some red-ish thing. Yep. Yeah. Ethiopia's lilac. All that really does for you is saying, everybody who's fighting with me is one color, and everybody who's fighting against me is another color. Yep. Pretty much. If you don't have that ticked, every country will have its own color, and I like to keep it that way. Next to that is your button for displaying allied battle plans, which should be ticked because you're playing together. So that will allow me, once we're in a faction, to see your front lines. Okay. Uh, in the bottom row, on the very left, read what it says. Day and night loop. Yeah. Yay. That's off. where you switch that annoying thing off. <laughs> then you have Fog of War, which I have off. It doesn't really add anything to the game. It just basically shows you how much your units can actually see, and the rest is a little grayish. So you can have that. You, you don't need to. And the next new thing is toggle display radars. Radars usually only um, see either when you're hovering over them or when you're, in, when you're in the air map mode. I just have that off. I don't need it. All right. So I said we're going to start running the game, right? This episode. Yep. Which is running, like, six minutes longer than it should. So we start running the game now. For a second or two. There we go. And, uh, boop, 2nd of January, next day. Anything changed? Uh, wow. Yeah. I'm I still, winning. <laughs> I, I still need one oil. <laughs> so it's not 30 oil anymore. I need one oil. I still have no divisions in basic training. But I want to try to... What I want to try to do here... No, I can't. I can't still invite you to faction. Well, we come back to that later. It's a little barked, I think. I'm good with everything now. Yeah. yeah. Italy is fascist and needs world tension at 0% to join a faction, and we currently have 0% world tension, but they can't join a faction. It might be because you're in a war, but that is bollocks, because you can join a faction whenever you want. Um, it's just not highlighted yet, so we have to wait for that a little bit. Okay. Saying I still have no divisions in basic training, but I do... Yep. Uh, no, you have divisions that are training, but those are oh, deployed great. divisions. You don't recruit new divisions. Okay. That's basic training. But we get to that next episode. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're actually letting the game run a little bit because stuff needs to happen before we can continue. All right, yes. for those on the stream, don't go anywhere. We we'll continue straight away for quite a, some time, I guess. For those watching the video, well, you know, sucks to be you. <laughs> and so for this episode, don't forget to justify subscriber gold and also blitzkrieg that like button severely with all the tanks you have. You know, punch it three times. No, not two times, that's not enough. Three times, at least. Always, you know, go, go for an odd number there. Uh, follow me on Twitter if you want to catch the next live stream. I am Scripter, he is Scott, and you are dismissed.